Hey folks, I'm Steve Butler. Do you have a young, curious underwater explorer in your family? Well, you're gonna love today's project. We're building a paddle boat for kids, complete with a porthole and glass bottom to view the marvels that lay beneath the surface. Come see how we do it here in the garage. All right, let's have a look at today's project. We have two sides made up of half inch thick pine and they attach to six ribs. And those ribs are made up of three quarter inch thick pine and they're structural. Now we're cutting a curve on the rib to form the deck. And the deck and the hull are made up of eighth inch tempered hardboard or masonite. We have a porthole that we'll be drilling and cutting the deck so you can see in there and you can also store. It's a storage area to collect rocks, seashells, whatever you like. And underneath, we have a piece of plexiglass so you can view what lays underneath the water surface. Okay, first thing we need to do is cut our pieces to size. I was doing a little research. I wanted to build a project for the water. I saw related items to this and then my son was on his buoy board with his goggles on looking down into the water and the idea just came together. I'm using 1x6 off-the-shelf pine for the sides of our project. Now it comes 3 quarter inch thick, so I went ahead and I milled it down to half inch thick. I'm going to cut the length to 54 inches, and the boards, a 1x6 board is already 5 and a half inches, and that's the width we need, so I do not have to rip the sides. Okay, just going to cut these down. Okay, now I have our two sides cut the length of 54 inches. I'm going to go ahead and cut all the pieces that make up our ribs. So we have a series of six ribs and each of them are a different measurement. First thing I'm going to do is cut our first rib to 19 inches. Before I do that though, I want to make sure I'm wearing safety protection for my eyes and hearing protection. Okay, let's get started. Now we need to cut a rib to 22 and a quarter inches long. Now I've set it up to cut it at 22 and a half inches for our next rib. Okay, our next rib is cut at 22 and an eighth inch long. Our last rib is cut at 20 and 3 quarter inches. Okay, we have all our pieces cut the length. We're just going to go to the table saw and rip them to width. Our first rib we're going to cut at 1 and 3 quarter inches. Make sure you have safety glasses on, hearing protection. I'm doing a lot of talking, so I'm not wearing a dust mask. I'm going to put the dust collector on and we'll make that cut. Now we need to cut two ribs at two inches wide.
Our next rib is cut at seven inches. Now remember, anything wider than your fist, you do not need to use a push stick. But if it's narrower, you definitely want to use one. I've set the fence to six and three quarter inches. We're gonna cut our next rib. Our last rib is cut at six inches. Okay, we have all our ribs cut the length. Now I'm just gonna go back to the chop saw and cut an angle on either end. And that creates the tapered shape of our hull. We have two ribs that we're gonna cut first at four degrees. Now I've just made sure that my rib piece is just flush at the edge of my saw. I don't really want to shorten the length at all, but I want to create that four degree angle. So I'm gonna make my cut, flip it over so that the angle is in the same direction. It's very easy to get confused and make that second cut. Okay, let's get started. Okay, we have both those ribs cut at four degrees. Now we're just gonna take the remainder of the ribs and cut them at eight degrees. Okay, we have all the angles cut on our rib pieces. We're just gonna to go to the bench and use our template to trace out the curve. Yeah, this project has a slight curve to it in the deck, but you can modify the design. You can create a greater curve by altering the radius of the ribs or make a flat top boat, whatever you desire. When I made the prototype for today's project, I also made a set of templates for our ribs. I used quarter inch plywood for the template and just cut out the curves and the angles on them. You can see them here. They're half templates. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this on our board, put it flush with the edge and our ends, our angle pieces. I'm just gonna use my marker. Trace our line to the halfway point. Flip this over, flush it up with the other end. There we go. You can see that curve. I'm just going to go ahead and do that to the rest of the ribs.
Okay, we have all the curves laid out on our ribs. Now we just need to lay out the template for our side piece. And I've laid out all the markings and the placements of where I want those ribs. I've also marked out the locations of our screw holes. Now it tapers at the front and at the back it's cut to a 20 degree angle. We'll do that at the bandsaw when we cut the curves of our ribs. So I'm just going to lay this down, lay out our shape. I'm just going to take my awl and go through and mark out those screw holes. Now that I have that done, I'm just going to flip it over, do the same thing to the other board. Okay, now we're just going to go to the bandsaw cut the curves on our ribs, and cut out the tapers on our side pieces. All right, we're ready to cut the curves on our rib. The same rule applies to the bandsaw as we did the table saw. You only want to expose about a quarter of inch of blade above your work surface. In this case, just enough so that I can follow the line clearly. Okay, I have my eye protection on, ear protection. I'm going to put the dust collector on. And you want to let the bandsaw come up the full speed before you start your cut. Okay, let's cut the curves. All right, we have all the curves cut out on the ribs. We're just going to cut the tapers on our sides of our hull.
There we go. We have all our pieces cut and shaped. We're just going to go to the bench and start assembling our hull. Okay, I like to start assembling with the taller ribs first. It just helps me align everything else, adds a little support. So I'm going to attach those to one side first, go around, attach the other side, and we'll finish off by adding our smaller ribs. Now, you want to make sure you use an exterior grade adhesive for this. Also, I'm just going to use some brad nails as a temporary clamp to hold the whole thing together, and then I'm going to come back and add some brass screws to it. Okay, you can see all that's coming together. Just gonna go ahead and attach our smaller ribs. This looks great. While the glue's drying, I'm going to cut our masonite for the deck and our bottom to size. Yeah, I'm using eighth inch tempered masonite for the skin of the boat. It's not waterproof, so you definitely have to cover it with a spar varnish or enamel paint, but it's very pliable and bends on our ribs quite easily. Before we go to the table saw and cut our masonite, you want to find the dimensions of your boat. Each one can be slightly different. You'll cut the masonite oversize and then use a hand plane or a flush trim bit to make it fit. Okay, let's get started. Okay, I'm going to use my table saw sled and we're going to cross cut these boards to length. Before we do that though, I just want to point out these boards were a little more floppy than I expected. So what I did is I added a bridge from the table saw to my workbench just to help cradle and make sure that this is carried over smoothly. There we go. Now that we have all the masonite cut, we're going to go back to the bench and just do a little test fit on our boat frame. All right, let me show you what I did. I took a hand plane and I cleaned up the curves and I also shaped the boat a little bit. Now I've turned it over and I'm ready to attach a masonite to the bottom. There's a plexiglass window that fits in the center here. So I've cut our masonite in two sections. I'm just going to run a bead of glue around the perimeter of the boat and then we're just going to attach it with some brad nails, let that cure and afterwards come back and we'll use some copper tacks. Okay, let's get started. Again, you wanna make sure you're using an exterior waterproof glue. Now 
I just rub this on a little bit, create a little friction, help hold it in place. And any of the masonite board that is hanging over, or our sides itself, will get trimmed down with a hand plane, cleaned up a little later. There we go, just gonna go and do the other end. And we're gonna be putting a varnish on this, something like a spar varnish and an enamel paint to really help waterproof this. I'm using the masonite because it's flexible and it'll shape to the, the body of the boat. Okay, there we go. I'm just gonna turn it over, do the other side. And you can see where that plexiglass window fits in. It's looking great. Okay, I flipped the boat over and we're ready to attach our top deck. But before I do that, I wanna go around to all the seams where I've attached the bottom and put in some silicone caulking around there just to help reinforce it and waterproof it. Okay, let me show you what I did. I went ahead and installed our plexiglass to the bottom. I finished off our deck and where the seams meet, I added these mahogany strips just to reinforce it and to keep it watertight. Now we need to fit our porthole. Not only does the porthole allow you to see down into the water, but it opens up, creating a well so you can put your collection of seashells or any stones you're gathering in there. This is the template that came with my porthole I ordered. Now it might seem obvious, but you really want to make sure you're installing this above the window on the bottom. Now, I just kind of eyeballed it and found my center, and I just made a little mark as a reference. Just gonna go ahead and trace out the shape of this. And I'm just gonna drill a starter hole and then cut it out with my jigsaw. Okay, we've installed our porthole. This is a great build for the entire family. Best of all, it's lightweight. You don't need to haul it with a trailer. Maybe I'll find that watch I lost at the lake last week. As far as finish goes, I added about two or three coats of spar varnish to it, but it really comes to life when you add color. Well, as usual, I had a blast building that project with you, and I think Quinn enjoyed it as well. That's it, I hope you come back and you'll see us here again in the garage.
Okay, our first rib, we're gonna, our first rib, we're gonna whip, <laughs> we're gonna whip the one in the silly wabbit. <laughs> we're gonna whip the cut at one. <laughs>